All right, we're here at the end of the session with Murphy here and Bailey and uh, their roadmap to success. So basically, uh, you know, I spent some time talking to the Guardian about uh, the breeder that they got the dog. The dog. Both dogs came from the same breeder. One of the, uh, this dog, Murphy, is, uh, you know, a pretty well-adjusted dog. Bailey's got some issues, and uh, Bailey, uh, in some of the videos above, just spent time kind of walking around in circles, which is, means the dog's kind of stuck in a psychological loop of sorts. And so basically, uh, I think that a lot of times the mom loves, uh, the guardian loves the dogs to death, and they're her companions, and like a lot of us do, we, we show a lot of love and affection to those that are important to us in our lives. But just like kids, if we give them everything they want whenever they get it, or whenever they ask for it, after a while they're not prepared for things. So uh, one of the members of the family was talking about that the dogs don't have any practice being alone. That's really important that we do. We have to set our dogs up for success for any activity, whether it's learning to sit, walk on a leash, uh, potty training, uh, you know, being home alone. And those are all in very important things. And so what I try to do is I try to recreate situations where we can help the dog learn the behavior on their own, as opposed to us telling them what to do each step along the way. A lot of us like to micromanage, tell our dog to go here, go there, don't look here, don't look there. Now you have to remember when it comes to dogs, attention itself is validating. So anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're actually amplifying and rewarding. Now the guardian, uh, and this is a very common thing that a lot of my clients do, especially when we get puppies that are as cute as this little guy. Thank you buddy, I appreciate the little kisses. Um, they reach over and they jump up on our shins and we reach over and we pet them. What we're telling the dog is because anything we're doing, the dog is doing when we pet is what we're reinforcing, is jumping up on me is the best way to ask me to give you attention. So one of the things, I, I, uh, one of the videos above, I talked light switch on, light switch off. Light switch on is engaging with the dog. So the dog comes over to me and sits down, I reach over and pet it. That's engaging or turning the light switch on. As soon as the dog jumps up, which he did in the video, the guardian stopped petting. Now the timing of that is crucial. The, dog needs to, the human needs to start or stop engaging with the dog within three seconds. After a while, the dog will say, you know, every time I sit, come and sit in front of my human, they invite me on a lap or they pet me. Every time I try to scratch them, they just lean back. They don't even look at me anymore. If your dog is barking, he was doing a little demand barking earlier, weren't you, buddy? And when he was demand barking, if we say shh or stop or whatever these things are, oh, it's working. I'm getting the human's attention. That's what I'm trying to do by barking. So if we just ignore completely, then the dog can learn, well, that's not working. But as soon as I sit in front of them, they instantly start petting me or giving me attention. And dogs are what I call squeaky wheelers. They're going to do whatever gets them the attention. So basically, uh, if every time the dog comes and sits, I get attention or I get called up, every time I scratch, nothing happens. Now, uh, talking a little bit about, uh, we're gonna go through potty training here in a sec, but talking about uh, being alone, um, I really want the guardians to focus on positive reinforcement, which is kind of petting the dogs with passive training. So every time the dog comes to you, pet it and say come. Every time it sits down next to you, pet it and say sit. Every time it lays down on its own, pet it and say crash. Passive training is waiting for the dog to do the behavior voluntarily without any influence from the human whatsoever. This advance. Um, and then uh, after enough repetition, the dog starts to put two and two together. So um, uh, the guardians, uh, I'd like them to focus on the passive training and petting with a purpose because I think it's really gonna have the most profound effect on these dogs. Building them up with some self-esteem, some confidence and helping them learn skills is gonna make them feel better about themselves and again, cause them to be more engaging. Now for potty training, um, uh, there is a office in here, and uh, sorry, we don't have to show it, uh, but it's filled with, with puppy pads. And basically, uh, the guardian's doing this because she wants to keep her carpet safe, which is a very reasonable uh, option. But dogs are gonna potty, uh, the, the idea with the puppy pad is teaching them that they, you wanna go on the pad. If we pad the, put the pads everywhere, then the dog can kind of go anywhere. The idea is that first we have a whole bunch of pads, and then we have less pads, less pads, and less pads. Usually I just go with just one pad. Since you're struggling so much, Murphy, we're gonna let you go ahead and get down. Um, so basically, um, I'd like to block off the office because the dogs have just developed a behavior pattern of going in there and peeing all over the place. I want them to start peeing in the appropriate place. So I'd like to have like one area where it, that's, that's kind of out of the way, but we can have one potty pad. And basically what we do is we're going to have a little ramekin or a plastic thing of a uh, container or Ziploc bag filled with these tasty treats that I'm going to leave with you. Make sure they're fresh and uh, so they're going to be juicy and they have a nice uh, stink to them. So, if, as, and we're coming up with a new word of business. So anytime the dog goes, well, I'll talk about the puppy pad training actually after. Let me go through the, uh, the other basic puppy uh, uh, potty training. So the first thing is, as uh, the three times the dog's most likely to go is right after waking up, five minutes after the start of heavy, uh, or after eating, and 15 minutes after the start of heavy playtime. So if these guys start running around and wrestling and having a good time, look at the clock, it's 1.14, okay, at 1.30, we're gonna immediately take them outside. 
You want to hopefully put the dog in the place where they're going to where it's okay to go potty at the times they need to go potty. I call that pushing, putting the dog in position to succeed. Pat, sit. Murphy just went and sat to ask for uh, some attention, and mom did an awesome job of petting him, and then she invited and she allowed him up, and she can because he sat and he earned it first. But that's mom's distinction. Uh, not because, just because I sit doesn't mean I get on the path, and he want to get down, buddy. Okay, well, I'll let you down too. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just because I want something doesn't mean I get it. In fact, having a practice not getting things would be very helpful as well. So basically, uh, after 15 minutes of heavy play, we take them outside immediately. And as soon as they peer poop, we're going to say the new word of business. Now, as soon as the dog starts, we say business once and in a normal tone of voice. And then we're just going to be quiet. And when we get done pottying, within three seconds, we're going to give them a treat and then say the, the word business a second time. And so the first time associates the word of business with the action of elimination. The second time eliminates or combines the uh, reward with the command word. After enough repetition, this all becomes conflated. Now I also go out of my way to, uh, uh, when I'm really potty training dogs, sometimes I take it out once an hour on a regular basis just to try to increase that likelihood they're in the right place at the right time to go potty. Uh, but we only use positive reinforcement. This house has done a wonderful job. They don't uh, yell at the dog. One of the dogs went and peed right in front of us, had no hesitation. And that's, well, that's not a desired thing. That tells me the family has done the right thing. Because a lot of families, they rub the dog's nose in it. They punish the dog. They yell at the dog. And these are all negatives. And dogs don't learn very well from negative. We had a discussion earlier, the old way of dog training, which is a little bit more force and, and punishment based, where the new way of dog training, what we want to do is just is exclusively use positive reinforcement. I think that might be a potty. Now it looks like, yeah, yeah. Say, say business? Business. Did you film, did you film Business. Now he's not gonna take a treat from me, so when he gets done, reach over and just pet him and say business. Business. That was wonderful. So for him, he prefers, uh, he's a little bit worked up and he's he likes cheese, but not the treats that I had. And so a reward affection is better. But right there, that would be an opportunity if that's where the designated spot is, where we'd go give him five treats. Now this is actually a little play area that has the whole thing with puppy pads. Puppy pads. I would prefer this just to be a long-term confinement area so that the dogs can practice being in there alone from the, from the garden. So when she's watching TV, once a day, I would like you to have some time where the dogs practice being in there alone from you. Now we can do it with one dog or and one at a time or with both dogs if they get along, great. We just don't want them to get too rowdy or uh, if they do get a little rowdy, but we'd like them to eventually settle down and sit and lie down. We're having them practice being in the room, not being on your lap, and the world didn't end. Okay, so going back to potty training, what we want to do is take the dog out, say a business when it starts, and I give it a treat immediately afterwards, and exclusively positive reinforcement. Somebody's going to take himself for a walk. Um, all right, so um, uh, for the puppy pads, we want to put it in one area, and if the dog goes and potties in that area like he just did, we would go and get those five treats and give him five treats in a row, maybe five pieces of cheese since the dog's really short respond to cheese. Business, business, business. And the dog should be able to chew the treat in about two to three bites per, per uh, treat, so they're not chewing forever. So size them appropriately. Um, and then the idea is, after a while, the dog's like, I will dare not waste this urine inside in the office because this stuff is valuable. If I go over here, I get paid like, like gangbusters. And the dog's more and more inclined to do that. Um, I didn't ask this, but do they have a lot of appropriate chew toys? Yeah. I just mentioned that if you want to pan down and show what Bailey's doing. Let's go ahead and take that uh, away from Bailey. We don't want to give dogs, and you can go ahead and go back to me. There we go. We don't want to give dogs inappropriate items to chew on. A lot of people give dogs old socks, old shoes, things like that. And that actually can create a problem because the dog's practicing chewing on things we don't want. So make sure the dog has appropriate chew toys. Dog B size, we'd like to have them have stuffies and plushies and you know, good stuff to zoom around with and stuff that they like to play with. If you buy a toy and they don't want to play with it, that's okay. Just get another toy. Um, so, uh, but they should have a plethora of them, a basket somewhere where they can go and engage themselves. You have one, excellent. All right, um, so um, let me see, what else do we want to talk about? Um, potty, uh, or dinner. Um, there's a member of the family who, who does a great job, and he's like the personal chef for the dogs. Um, the problem is, uh, feeding dogs people food confuses them because then they think that when we're eating our food that it's for them. For dogs to be within seven feet of somebody who's eating is very disrespectful in the dog world. That's actually how the dog would try to challenge and take something away. And so when we're eating, we don't want to have the dog next to us. Now, uh, the, uh, one of the guardians, uh, well, the guardian's uh, 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 husband has passed away, and he did an amazing job from what I understand. He would have the German Shepherd sit on the, across the street when the family ate dinner. That's a great way of developing self-control because you do repeat that activity every day. 
The dog has some distance, which makes it not so intense. And then afterwards, they invite him over. A lot of us, we feed dogs right off the table or right off our plate, and that trains them to violate boundaries and perimeters that they know that they should keep. And having healthy boundaries and perimeters are really important. Children, still not ready for that, are you? There we go. So he's not ready for me to pet him, so I'm just reaching my, and I'm offering some trust by holding my hand there. When I try to pet him, he run away. And so if I just hold my hand down there and let him come and engage with me, and then he gets to walk away on his own, he feels more confident about engaging with me the next time. Now, he was doing a lot of, uh, of walking around in circles uh, when I first got here, which tells me that he was really agitated. I'm watching him now. He's doing some scent marking on the, on the walls, but he's walking in a normal tone, uh, fashion. And is this more of what you see on a regular basis? Okay, that's good. That's what we're looking for. Uh, now, uh, for potty training, a couple other things. We talk about maintenance. I'd like to have the guardian either close the doors or come up with a puppy uh, or a baby gate so the dogs can no longer go in there and remove all the puppy pads. They shouldn't potty in there at all, unless that's the place you want them to go. But since they've been doing that, I would recommend a different location. You see, that reach didn't make him move away. When I first got here, he would have ran away like a shot. So that tells me this is not something we can't fix. It's going to take time and practice. And it just, it's, it's just a little frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the dogs bark like this, it's basically when anybody moves around, they think that they're in charge. The dogs. And so if that's the case, then what they're trying to do is saying, I didn't give you permission to come up, I didn't give you permission to come in the room, because the lack of rules has confused them into thinking that they have the same authority as the humans. Now, rules aren't being mean, rules are just giving the dog structure, just like kids. The dog's job is to push the boundaries and see what they can get away with. Our job is to say, nope, here's the line, you're not allowed to be on my lap unless you sit. I'm not going to pet you unless you do something that I want, a desired action or behavior. Now, first, the dogs are going to keep on pushing. This is BS. I'm going to keep on trying to do it. But after a while, they'll get better and better at it, and they'll start getting on the page because this is what gets attention from people. Um, so uh, when we're feeding them, uh, when we're eating dinner, they shouldn't meet within seven feet of us. If we can't achieve that, we can use this long-term puppy area, put them in there while we're eating. And then the dogs, when we get done eating, then the dogs can kind of do their own thing um, and come back out because that way they're not violating that perimeter. Um, also, when we're feeding them, we want to make sure that we're feeding the dogs after we eat something first. Dogs eat in the order of their rank. Now, if you don't want to eat an actual meal, you can just get a couple of chips or cracker or a piece of celery or something, eat that, and then go ahead and feed the dogs after that. So that way the dogs see that you have a status of eating first, they uh, get to eat a little bit after that. Um, now, for the outside, because we have hawks in the area and these are such little dogs, we'd like to have an area where we can put the dogs outside because I took Bailey for a walk and it really seemed to help me bond with Bailey and it also seems to help Bailey's overall behavior. So, um, it would be nice if we had like an area out there where we can get, I don't want to say chicken wire because that's kind of, it doesn't look all that aesthetically pleasing. But if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, they have these fences, they're covered in plastic and it's bendable, and you can just kind of lay it across the top so you have a section, and then put a fence on the side so the dogs, you know, you can't get out of there. And so you know they're safe, you can put them in there and it's a safe place for them to be. They can sun themselves, make sure there's some shade in there, make sure they have water. Um, but if they spend a little bit more time outside, that's a little bit more engaging. Um, the little Bailey didn't, uh, he spent a lot of time with his breeder and didn't get a lot of socialization, I can tell, because he's just so nervous about everything. And puppies, this is why when you get a puppy, if you're going to get a puppy, you really want to try to get it um, around eight or nine weeks because they, they go through an imprint period, they really bond with you and it becomes a chemical process for us. But also, it just, they really, uh, we, they go through a critical socialization period. And so we can give them the opportunity to get used to all the sights and sounds that are normal in our house. You guys might have, we, if we're in California, we have street sweepers. The dogs are from the East Coast. The area that they're from, maybe they didn't have street sweepers, so they don't understand how to deal with that. But if it's, they're around it all the time, then that's just normal and natural, and I don't have to worry about that. So the more that we can help the dog be exposed to positive things, be, uh, the better. Now, uh, he's 10 months old. Socialization is really the most effective until the dog's about 9 months old. So he's a little bit past. Now, we can certainly help him get better at this, but it's going to be uh, a little bit more work and not as quick a process. But uh, taking him for a regular a daily walk is something I really like to see happen. Um, now, the guard, one of the guardians is having some, uh, some health issues, and so it's not always re uh, a reasonable expectation. I pulled out the laser, and I used a green laser, and the dogs seemed to both be really interested in following it. That might be something we might want to just like have the laser and run the dogs around the room chasing it, and if you use a red laser, they, don't look, uh, they don't, won't chase it, maybe use a green laser. Try not to let them look up and see the laser dot here, because otherwise they look up here and they think that it jumped off the floor there. Uh, but this is a nice way to exercise them without actually having to go for a walk on really hot days like it is today here in Southern California. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, uh, once, uh, now, one of the videos above goes over uh, some basic commands. Sit, 
uh, lay down, sit up, and stand. Now we're going to teach ba uh, uh, Murphy how to do that first, and then we're going to practice that, and then after a while we're hoping that that will transition a little bit over to, uh, to Bailey. Now the passive training is going to go a long ways toward doing this. So every time Bailey comes to you, pet her and say, him and say, come. Every time, uh, great job. Every time the dog sits, pet him and say, sit. Um, every time they lay down, pet him and say, crash. Um, so you're just putting things in context. Now I talked to the guardians about uh, a little bit of maintenance. Uh, maybe we might put a, a little strip of paper in front of the two of the windows that, so the dogs can't see out the street, so they don't practice being the guard dogs. We don't want to allow them on the furniture unless they get invited on the furniture. Um, and then we might get X mats that we put on the on the couch and other areas so the dogs won't continue getting up here. Now the dogs have just got what we call the zoomies. They're running around. They're playing. So we started about about three or four minutes ago. So it's 1:23. So right, so probably in about uh, you know, they both went in the, one of their bigger confinement areas. Um, oh, uh, and I'm going to go back to potty training in a sec. But basically, in about 10 minutes, we want to take them outside or wherever it is, put them in an area so that they're going to potty. Now, if you take your dog outside and it doesn't potty within five minutes, a lot of people think I'll just leave you out here longer, longer, longer. Well, if they go in five minutes, it's not urgent enough for them to go. So after five minutes. Bring them back inside, put them in a kennel. The kennel should be just big enough for that dog to sit, stand up, or, uh, or lay down in, but no extra room. Don't put any padding in there, just leave just that, and only put them in there one at a time, and don't let the other dog kind of be around the area. What, we're say what we want to do is if we take the dog out to go potty and it doesn't potty, we bring it back inside, and then we put it in the confinement area for 15 to 30 minutes, then we take it back outside and give it another five minutes to go, and we keep repeating this process until it eliminates when it's outside. Now make sure that you're taking treats with you outside. Now outside, I wouldn't do the jackpot that I talked about inside uh, for this one. I can't remember if I did it in this video. We uh, did this video twice. So if, as soon as the dog potties on the designated potty area inside, we're going to go get the potty, uh, the treats out of a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware, and we're going to give five bites. And I would use probably cheese because they really seem cheese. Try to block him before he jumps up on you next time. Um, and make sure you ch uh, chop the pieces up small enough where the dog. There you go. That was a little bit more. They were almost there. there Great job. Um, so we want the dog to chew the treat in about two to three bites before they go to chew on, uh, so they're ready for the next one. We want the dog to be like, oh man, if I pee on this puppy pad, I get a big reward. If I do anywhere else, I don't get any reward at all. Um, so, um, okay, so uh, let me think, what else? Walking them, when I'm walking them, I normally walk dogs, I want them to walk at a heel and all the rest of that stuff. For Bailey, because he's just so, he's so low to begin with, we want to let him do whatever he wants within reason as long as it's safe. And so he doesn't need a long walk. Just walking around the block will be great enough for him to do it. And uh, we just don't want him to practice that, that circular pattern. So when he does the circular pattern, that's when you want to get out some cheese. I, we, uh, the Guardian laid this down on the ground, and I sprinkled a little bit of cheese on here, shredded cheese. This is a great way the dog can't get, if I get a treat and all in one nugget, it's, it's all concentrated. If I shred the cheese or have like uh, Parmesan cheese on the cut, that's got to really work for it. And it preoccupies and, and gets